Hello, grade 12s, and welcome to this lesson on horizontal translations in functions. We're going to be starting by defining what we mean by a horizontal translation. A horizontal function is a movement of the graph to the left or to the right of where it has been drawn. In a moment, we'll join Karen and her students as they discuss a task they were given in a previous lesson. In this task, they were asked to translate a function horizontally. Let's join them now as they analyze their answers. To start this lesson, we will go over the task in detail. Cindy Swam. Here is the transparency and the graph of f of x equals x squared that we used the last time. Please place the transparency so that it lies directly on top of the original function. Sure. Good. Now I've written down the coordinates of the highlighted points in a table here. Can we agree that the points on the original graph correspond to the points on the graph on the transparency? Lil A corresponds to capital A at point zero zero. B corresponds to B at point two and four. C corresponds to C at three and nine. D corresponds to D at minus two and four. Now, please move the graph three units to the right and let's see what happens to the new coordinates of those points. Tabojo, will you please record the coordinates of the translated points? Okay, so point A, which was zero and zero, is now three and zero. Point B, which is two and four, is now five and four. Point C, which is three and nine, is now six and nine. Finally, point D, which is minus two and four, is now one and four. Remember that mathematics is all about looking for patterns. Tebojo, can you see a pattern here? Yes, the x values of the translated points have increased by 3, which is the amount that we move the graph to the right. I also noticed that this time the y values are unchanged. How are we going to describe this change using function notation? That's a good question. Let's start by writing down the y values of the original function using function notation, like we did in the previous lesson. I could do that. 0 becomes f of 0, 4 becomes f of 2, 9 becomes f of 3, and 4 becomes f of minus 2. Good. Next, we'll look at the translated points. Can you see any patterns here? Um, we know that x values of the translated points have all increased by 3, and the y values haven't changed. Do you have any idea how to write that in function notation? May I try? Sure, go ahead. Well, since the y value of the translated points are the same as the original y values, can't we just write down the same function notation? So for example, instead of writing 4 for the y value of the translated point B, I can write down f of 2 just like we did for the original point. Good thinking, but it won't quite work because that would give us a pair of coordinates 5 and f of 2. And that makes sense, yet is it what we want? That gives me an idea. Um, what if I wrote 5, f5, five minus 3, that'll give me the right y value and link the correct x value of the translated point. That's a great idea, Cindy. Let's test that on point D. I know that the y coordinate of the translated point is the same as the y coordinate of the original point, namely f of minus 2. I also know that the x coordinate of the translated point is 1. If I call the y coordinate of the translated point f of 1 minus 3, then I have both a definition of the point in terms of its x coordinate, 1, and the correct y value. But I also know that we move the graph to the right by 3 units. So in this expression, I also have the translation of 3. It all seems to make sense. Well done, that's a great observation. We can now write this in more general terms for this translation of three units to the right. For each of the translated points, the y value is written as f of x minus three. Can you complete the table now? Here's my completed table. Tebojo's observation has demonstrated what happens to this particular function. In fact, to any function that has been shifted to the right by a certain number of units. If you look carefully, you'll notice that the table doesn't actually refer to any particular function, but rather to the general function f. Now let me show you what I mean by using this computer program again. 
Here I define the function f of x equals x squared and the graph has already been drawn. Notice how the same four points that we have been using have been highlighted here. Below f of x, I have g of x. I have defined this function as g of x equals f of x plus a. And to start off with, a will equal zero. Now I can change the value of a by moving this dot along this line here, or by pressing any one of the values below the line. These values represent the value of a. We move the graph three units right, and from our table of values, it looks like this will happen to g of x when a equals minus three. Right, so I press minus three, and g of x appears as it changes from zero to minus three. It's doing just as we predicted. It's moving right. What if we changed a to minus four? I guess the graph would move another unit to the right. Go on, try it. Exactly as I thought. The power of this program is that we can change the function from f of x equals x squared to any other function. Mm -hmm. I've reset a to zero and changed the function to x plus three multiplied by x plus one multiplied by x minus two and the OK button. Again, a graph of a cubic function. So if you select a equals minus three, then the graph should move right by three units. Cool. It's done exactly what we wanted. What if you press 3 instead of minus 3? Let's see. Ah, this time the graph moves in the other direction. We can summarize all that we have learned this way. The function g of x equals f of x plus a is a horizontal translation of the function f of x by a units. The translation is left for a greater than 0 and write for a smaller than zero. This skill can sometimes be a bit confusing, so let's look at one more example together. Here is the function. f of x is equal to negative x plus 2 squared plus 8. It is marked by points a, b, c, and d. Now let's move it four units to the left. All of the points have moved four units to the left. Now this graph is represented by g of x equals negative, open brackets, x plus 4, minus 2, close brackets, squared, plus 8. This shows us that f of x plus h will result in all x coordinates moving h units to the left. f of x minus h will result in all x coordinates moving h units to the right. Thank you for joining us, grade 12s. Remember to look at the task video for this section in the functions and inverses task video. You'll also be able to learn more about functions on our website that's www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.